Hey guys, I'm Charles Press, and I'm that guy from high school, and I'm here to show you guys how you can get started on your own webtoon. For those of you that don't know, webtoons are this free app that you can download on your phone, and it's really neat. They've got a bunch of cool web comics, and they're made by everyday people because they're web comics. It's not like um, it's not like Shonen Jump, where you know it's made by somebody who has to follow directions from an editor, and it's a bunch of meddling. It's this really cool app where a bunch of people can post their story in their purest forms and they still got lots of cool art and neat visuals and it's, it's a really cool app. Uh, I also have my own uh, webcomic on there, Platinum Star Mage, and it's a isekai shonen deconstruction for those of you that like those genres, but more on that later. For those of you that want to get started on your own webtoon, I've got some tips and tricks to go ahead and get you started. Before you get started on your webcomic, you're going to need a program to draw on and I use Medibang Paint Pro. It's a free open source application that anyone can download on their computer. It's compatible with most drawing tablets and you can also use you know any other drawing program you want like a micro like a Adobe Photoshop but for people who want a free you know pretty easy to understand tool you can use Medibank Paint Pro. I wasn't paid by them I just really enjoyed the application. You're also gonna need a way of communicating with the application by that I mean you're gonna need like your mouse or a pen tablet to draw with. Uh, you can get a pretty cheap one on Amazon like I have the Huion 680S uh, pen tablet. It's pretty cheap. It's like $40. And once you have one of those, then you're good to go ahead and start drawing. But before you even <laughs> before you even touch down on drawing, you're going to need to establish what your story's about, uh, who is it about, what is the fantastical journey that they're going on, what are they going to do, or are they a character in a suburban setting, is it a slice of life? Are they a person who gets transported to another world? Is, do they live in a world with superpowers or magic? Once you establish the world, figure out the setting, figure out, uh, you know, what are the rules of this world so you're not coming up with things on the fly because that can end up with a lot of inconsistencies in your story and you'll back yourself into a corner. So go ahead and figure all that out now before you even start working on your webtoons. Then, once you go ahead and establish all that, you can then begin to work on your characters. Of course, start with, you know, your main character, what is their personality, go ahead and try out their design, what is their look, and make sure that their look, when you're drawing, make sure that their look reflects their personality. If they're somebody who's cheerful and optimistic, draw them with a lot of soft lines and a lot of curves, a lot of circles. If they're somebody who's uh, abrasive or clever or cunning, go ahead and draw them with some, you know, sharper angles, draw them with more triangles in mind. And if they're somebody who's supposed to be kind of reliable and solid, then draw them with a lot of more angular lines, something more akin to a square. And if they have a combination of any of these, then go ahead and try and draw them with, you know, combinations of different of different shapes to give them that aura, to give them that uh, impression of that personality that you want to give them. And it'll help convey that a lot easier than just trying to tell people what they are. Take, for example, the character that's on screen right now. By his design, what can you infer from him? That he's, you know, kind of cheerful, kind of a, I guess, kind of a goofball vibe is what I'm getting from him. And that's exactly what I'm trying to convey, because he's going to be more of a silly character. He's a, he's a humanoid frog, and even though, you know, and that's, that's all well and good, but he's a humanoid frog in a, in a human environment so of course he's gonna come off as a bit more goofy a bit more silly uh in the world that i have in my webcomic it's mostly populated by humans while there are plenty of you know animals that are humanoid like and walk around and talk it's mostly humans uh, that populate it and he's gonna be a bit of a goofball he's gonna ironically he's while well, he does have a uh he is a goofball. His backstory is kind of like a Sasuke or a Karapika background. His 
entire village was was killed, um, <laughs> which probably doesn't which probably doesn't befit a which probably doesn't befit a goofier uh, frog man, but that's kind of the point. Uh, like it's because I like I said earlier, my story is a shonen and isekai deconstruction, and I kind of wanted to like ask the question: What if, what if like Sasuke was a goofball? Like, what if he wasn't like this super serious edge lord? What if he was like a goofball, a, a freaking frog man? You know, like what if, what if the, uh, what if the Uchiha didn't have this like godlike power? What if it was something? super silly and goofy and you know kind of useless and that's kind of the idea with that um but back to you know <laughs> but back to the whole topic of creating your web tune and your web comic you want to make sure that people can you know guess what they are about just by looking at them that'll help convey what you, you know what you want it to convey and once you've established your setting and some of the characters, you can go ahead and begin writing out your your first chapter. Go ahead and figure out how does the story start. And a lot of times what you want to do is you want to start it off at a pretty interesting place. Like, it's not always a great idea to start off with a, with a monologue or a narration, even though it's really tempting. Um, like, in my... In my webtoon, I started off with a flash forward to future events to kind of give people something to look forward to or something exciting, you know, something that they'll, you know, to grip them in. And a lot of different stories do this, like Gurren Lagann is probably the best example I can think of to where it's like, whoa, this is, this is so cool. What, you know, what's, how do we get from here to here? Like, and then you, if you want to jump into your narration and you know all of that jazz go ahead and jump into your narration but start it off it's somewhere interesting or even if you want have the setting kind of speak for itself uh if you think that it can carry the introduction you know you don't have to do a narration in either case you know just have fun with it and tell the story that you want to tell that's kind of the beauty of webtoons you don't have to answer to anybody uh not to an editor not even the fans you can just tell the story that you want to tell so now that you've gotten your first chapter down and you know where it's gonna go uh go ahead and start drawing it out you know go ahead and start if you want you can draw it on paper and then take a picture of it upload it to your email or google and then just copy paste it from your email or Google Drive right into whatever program you're using and you can just trace it digitally and clean up the line work, add color and shading. Uh, that's what I do. That's what I did with the picture of the frogman. I I drew it on paper and then I, you know, did the line mark, the line art in Mitty Bang Paint because I'm not really super familiar with digital art, or at least when I started, I wasn't too good at digital art, but I mean, I'm way better at it now by the time I've hit chapter three of my webtoon. Um, and speaking of webtoon chapters, you want to make sure that when you're doing chapters for webtoons that you your drawings flow. You want them to have a nice downward flow to them because when people scroll on the webtoons it's not like comics and uh manga where it's reading from like side to side they're going from up to down so you have to make sure that when you do things like word bubbles or drawings try and have the action flow in a way that carries their eye downward from picture to picture so that way it makes it easier for them to read and it's more pleasant and a lot of authors do this really well and they do it so well that you don't even notice but you kind of notice when they don't do it well uh one of the best authors on webtoons at this is the dude who does tower of god like that that is such a beautiful looking webtoon and it flows so well it has so much energy and panache to it and it's a lot of it is due to that nice downward flow like it's very easy to read and that's where i'm gonna stop today's video for now uh i will be back with more tips and tricks on webtoons if this video does do well so go ahead and leave a uh, comment or like the video and that, that'll let me know if i should do more content like this in addition to the content that i already do 
Uh, thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and check out Platinum Star Mage or follow me on Twitter. Well, you know, whichever, choose your poison. <laughs> but I appreciate you guys so much, and I will see you guys next time.